What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Monday. I was going to say Friday, but we're not quite there to Friday yet. Uh, it is Monday, June 26, 2023, about 12.17, 12.18 p.m. here. Latest activity looks like a 1.5 into the Oklahoma area, the latest on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out the latest earthquake activity here along the west coast. Got a little bit of movement kicking up. Northeast of Reno, now this is a little interesting swarm here because uh, it is away from our previous swarm that we've seen over the last 30 days, I believe. Let me check here and go back to the uh, all magnitudes. We were looking at a little separate swarm here, a couple different distinct swarms uh, outside Lake Tahoe and also northwest of Reno here. This is the older swarm. Looks like we got uh, a newer migration here of earthquake activity to the northeast of the Reno Sparks, Nevada area. Uh, there is some fault systems that run through here. Uh, Nevada is riddled with faults everywhere. Uh, and this type of scenario, when we got the little shifting and migration of different swarms, obviously uh, it's a sign of some increasing pressure out here in the Reno area. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, Reno does get some larger activity on occasion. It's been a little while. Uh, looks like um, the largest one so far, at least in this little swarm, looks like a 3.4. Uh, a couple other smaller quakes this morning. So watching that area, uh, Northern California, the rest of the area over here, pretty quiet except for the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Uh, that's going to be the Calpine Hydrothermal Operations. And a little bit of movement here along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. It's a plate boundary. Rest of the area, uh, got one little earthquake, a couple earthquakes down here near the Fraser Park area. This is the triple point or maybe quadruple point here of many different vaults. And we got the plate boundary here in the dark red line. That's the San Andreas Fault. That's followed up by the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. And then a separate fault that runs to the, uh, the west over here, the Big Pine Fault Zone. A very sensitive area in terms of stressed regions. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity kicking up on that today. Nothing big. Uh, Ridgecrest area got a, looks like a 1.1 coming in as we speak. About an hour or so ago, a little small quake. And the rest of Southern California here, a little spotty. Uh, 2.5 map and above. Shows uh, one from yesterday and one from today, right on the San Jacinto fault zone. All right, looking up here into the... Uh, Montana area and a Wyoming looks like we got a little bit of activity here across the Yellowstone region So let's double check that and make sure we got things um, Covered here Not really see anything major. Uh, there's a couple smaller earthquakes around the northwestern corner here of the park It's gonna be these uh, very small earthquakes and far as Not for sure what this signature is uh, these little signatures look like, um, it doesn't look like earthquake activity, and I'm really not seeing them show up too much across um, the area, so I'm not for sure what those are. I don't know if there's any storms up there currently taking place or not, but uh, definitely keep an eye on that. All right, uh, backing out of here, covering the rest of the country. There's that Oklahoma earthquake here, south of the OKC region, a 1.5. New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. The eastern portion of the country, quiet as well. Down here across the Puerto Rico area, looks like um, latest a 3.2. To the southeast of the San Juan area, this is on the eastern side of the Puerto Rico region. 12 kilometers deep, a little scattered activity out here as well across the Puerto Rico trench. Uh, look at the earthquake 3D globe here. Middle America trench, pretty quiet today. Down into the South America region, there's some twos and threes. It looks like we even had a couple fours down there as well, including a 4.7 well underneath Bolivia, 249 kilometers deep. Uh, that is a uh, definitely a subduction zone earthquake way down there, so we'll continue to watch, uh, maybe for some further movement upstream. Over here around the New Zealand area, looks a little bit more active today. Quite a few threes kicking up here on the map, so... Let's double check that here. Let me go over to the uh, GeoNet servers from New Zealand. These are the folks that cover the uh, 
The activity there across New Zealand looks like a couple earthquakes, threes in the last couple hours or so. There's those threes showing up, the largest a 3.4 about five hours ago. Uh, now this activity uh, a little all over the place, not in one specific area. You got a little bit of movement down into the South Island, North Island, and in between. So take your pick. A little bit uh, active there across the area today. Check out the earthquake drums here across the entire New Zealand area. There's some of those threes popping up. Showed up, you know, kind of uh, spaced out across the New Zealand area. Not for sure what this is. Um, doesn't look like um, any type of earthquake activity. Just kind of a drawn out signature. Really not, uh, I guess we got a little glimpse of it here. Not for sure what that is. That's a little weird. Uh, looks like that was uh, last night. That's about the only area that, that's showing up on though. Uh, there's some of that earthquake activity at the threes across the New Zealand region. Uh, aside from that, uh, just slight uptick today. Continue to watch that as we've been seeing activity bounce back and forth here all around New Zealand. But, uh, you know, the folks down here just seen a couple smaller earthquakes. But uh, I believe it's got to catch up here with all this movement around there recently. 4.8 in the Tonga region. Still seeing some activity bouncing back and forth here between the Kermadec Trench. Some deeper movement quakes and uh, shallow earthquake activity. Today it looks like... Um, well, the latest one, somewhat deep, 157 kilometers deep there, just outside Samoa. That is into the northern end of the Tonga Trench. Definitely keep an eye on that area. Uh, the uh, seismic gap today, roughly about the uh, Fiji area westward here through the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu included. Looks like that's uh, just a little quiet today. Still seeing some movement here across the Java Trench. Here's that 5.2. Let me see here. 5.2 coming in pretty early this morning, about 3 o'clock or so. Into the Sumatra area, 85 kilometers deep. Uh, also, yesterday we did see uh, another deep earthquake here at the southern end of the Java Trench. Watch this area. It's definitely prone for some large earthquakes. Uh, the latest one looks like, though, in this specific area. Going to be a 4.9 Andaman Sea area, about 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, further west along the plate boundary looks somewhat active. A lot of these quakes from last night, the red older rings. Uh, but we're still seeing some twos kicking off here across the Mediterranean and the plate boundary that is involved here across that region. Nothing big going on. One earthquake down in the South uh, Africa region, it looks like, a 3.0. The Atlantic Ocean, not a whole lot showing up here currently. We did see a little bit of activity uh, up here on the northern top of the globe here a day or so ago. I uh, haven't really seen anything since then. Alaska, what do we got up into the Alaska region? Looks like um, a little smaller earthquake activity. There's one right after midnight there, 4.6 into the Aleutian Trench, about 56 kilometers deep. And a little scattered activity way up north here. Never did quite make it that far north when I was up in Alaska. I only uh, flew into Anchorage. Went up to uh, Fairbanks area and that was about it. There's still a lot of Alaska I would love to cover. Uh, some beautiful sights out there. Absolutely love the Alaska region. Um, but yeah, so let's see what else we have. I think that's about it for earthquake activity. Nothing changing yet across the uh, volcano area of Hawaii. Most of the movement here across Pahala. That's, uh, let's double check the hazard notification system here from the USGS. See if anything's changed. Put up, uh, this update was put out today. No eruption, so it's currently paused. Doesn't look like any major changes, folks. So we'll continue to watch that though. See if anything, uh, pops up here soon a little bit of flaring overnight uh, some very low grade m flare activity looks like we had an m1 point uh it was a 1.6 or so kick it up uh, prior to that mostly c flare activity i don't believe we've seen any major advancements here in the sunspot regions just only 3340 here is our main area to watch 
still looks fairly complex. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's see what we got. Not a whole lot. Uh, maybe a little bit of strengthening within these couple sunspots, but it doesn't look like there's anything major developing, but we'll keep an eye on it because these can rapidly intensify, that's for sure. 99% um, chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 10% chance. It's been like that for a couple days, so... Um, that's what's listed here on the solarham.net site. No major awards forecasted here. Looks fairly green as far as the map goes. Not a whole lot of greenery up in the, in the uh, polar regions. Weather outlook today. As uh, far as severe weather potential, most of that has scooted off to the east coast. I know these folks need quite a bit of rain. Uh, they don't need the severe weather that comes along with it, but uh, sometimes that is the case. There is a 2% chance for tornado probabilities uh, listed up there in the green. That includes areas around the Philadelphia area. Also over here in Wyoming, eastern Wyoming region, getting in on a little bit of tornado possibilities. Now the main threat looks like going to be some potential strong winds there in the 30% category here, uh, along with some large hail in these respected areas. Dashed area is going to include uh, the potential of seeing uh, a little bit greater probability of two inch diameter hail or larger within about 25 miles of a point. So these are the locations with the prime ingredients in the soup, so to speak, of severe weather. So if you are out there, Charlotte, North Carolina, Greensboro, Durham, and also up here into Wyoming, also looks like it covers a portion of South Dakota and Nebraska up here. So keep an eye on that. Um, not a whole lot going on here in California and it's going to cook in a couple days. Uh, right now it's pretty pleasant, uh, about 77 down here. I got 79 in my backyard. Not, uh, not looking at anything major going on except for a heat wave coming up about Thursday of this week. Looking at the tropics down here, I want to look at, uh, see what's going on here in the Western Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico. See if we got any tropical development coming down into the Gulf area. Looks like maybe some type of tropical system wanting to form here on Wednesday. That's going to be that, you know, it looks a lot more disorganized today uh, compared to previous model runs. This is still way out there, but it does look like, you know, it's been consistent in terms of some type of tropical development there that will come into, uh, looks like around the Louisiana area. The 4th or the 5th of July, so we'll keep an eye on that uh, because it is getting, uh, you know, towards that time of year, right? Could see some uh, tropical development here. Aside from that, uh, enjoy your Monday, folks. It is definitely Monday. Feels like a Monday. That's about it. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here later tonight. Take care.